Back into it. You push. Pull it. Give me a hand. I'll tend to it. Jake Merritt. I'd rather be hitched to her than this. So would you. Trouble? Insolent, sir. What was said? It was more your dumb insolence, sir. The whip, Mr. Merritt, is for keeping order, not for venting your temper. If a man is lazy or drunk or talks addition, that is what the whip is for, Mr. Merritt. Yes, sir. Come on. Master Patrick back? Not yet, sir. I want to be away shortly. Reverend Marsden may be keeping him late at his lessons. Mm. You make too many excuses for him, Ellen. I'll finish your packing. Excuse me, where's Johnny? Your knee. Where's Johnny Prentice? Where is he? Proper, you Scottish fool! So get down and do it proper! A bit slow, sir, this one. A deal then. You're late, Patrick. I'm sorry, Father. I'm leaving for Sydney. The overseers have been told that you'll report any breaches of discipline in my absence. Will you be away long, Father? Mm, a few days. I'll be bringing back your new tutor. I hope you're looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Mm. Munion's gone. What about some grog? Not tonight. Mr. Merritt's got other plans tonight. Shut your mouth, Lynch! We're thirsty! We want a share of what you get for Salon Mannion's weight. Another word from you, boy. Oh, you get a share of my boot in your gut. You get grog when I say so. in that book of yours? It's a diary, Ellen. Secret things. That's what diaries are for. You 
Best attend to your lessons. You'll be in trouble when your papa gets back. Ellen, I heard it again. What? The same rumor. No. I did. A man from Parramatta told me a boy was seen with the natives. A red-headed boy. No. And they called him Yoni. Well, don't you see? I don't believe it. You always said he wasn't dead. I don't want to hear any more. Rumors, talk. It's been too many years. If he's not dead, he might as well be. But Ellen... No more. You understand? I don't care what anyone says. I know he's alive. He'll be gone a few days. No one will know. He'll know if I tell him. You wouldn't dare. You bitch! You were keen enough while he was away in Ireland. Since he came back, you think you're the mistress here. Well, one of these days he'll wed a fine lady, and where'll you be then? An old tart back on the streets, because he won't find you here. They're sending me across the sea From Cork to New South Wales Shut up, Doolan! The day will dawn, Alanna, when tyrants are cast down, and they will the Slut. I will drop off warm. Enough to stock up from the sailor before Manion gets back. I wish the hell I was in Sydney. Instead of stuck out here. Women. Life, bit of fun. Just don't stand there, do something, get out! You, Sergeant, organize these people! Make some attempt to put it out! How do I do that, you reverend? A few buckets of water from the tank stream, won't help! <laughs> If I was you, Rev, I'd pee on it! <laughs> or cry for rain! <laughs> An unfortunate first evening back in town, Mr. Bendham. Deliberate, Your Excellency. I would hazard a guess, sir. What isn't it in this place? You'll find changes. I sometimes envy you, your isolation on the Nepean. We keep in close touch with Parramatta, sir. Ah, yes. Parramatta. How is the paymaster of the call? Captain MacArthur, sir. <laughs> well enough when I last saw him. And uh, Captain Johnston, with his fine house at Annandale. <laughs> They've made themselves rich men. At least, sir, the colony develops. You call it development? with all the wealth vested in a few hands. Wealth, sir, is a privilege which can hardly be shared with all and sundry. That would be anarchy. This colony, sir, was founded by simple serving officers on inadequate pay and under great difficulties. Philip, Captain Collins, Tench, the best of them have gone. The opportunists remained. And I don't have to tell you that when Major Gross became Lieutenant Governor, 
They assigned themselves land and convicts from the public workforce. They imposed a military rule which still exists. You think I could have changed things, don't you? I ask you how, Manion. My edicts are ignored. Those who should be my aides are my enemies, entrenched in power. I sympathize, Your Excellency, but on my recent journey home, I found worse problems. Such as? The revolutionary terror in France, unrest in Ireland, sedition governor, Thomas Paine and his blasphemous document, The Rights of Man. Books, Mr. Mannion. Books can be burnt. But hogsheads of rum, when people crave it and the ruling officers import it and resell it at vast profits, how do we destroy that? 30 guineas, 30 guineas, 40 pounds, 40 pounds, 15, 15 guineas, 16 pounds, 16 going once. 17, 17 guineas, come on, sir, push along. 17, 18, 18 going once. 19, 20, 20 guineas, sir, do I hear 21? It's only money. I'm not asking an arm or a leg, I'm after money, sir. 20 guineas going once, going twice. 21 guineas, 21 guineas, sir, on the left hand. 21 guineas going once, going twice. Mr. Manion. Indeed. I'm sorry that affairs of business have delayed me. I trust your lodgings were satisfactory. Thank you, yes, sir. And your journey, the fast passage I hear. It's three and a half months. We had very favorable winds. Amazing. Well, you come highly recommended, Mr. Hardy. Did Sir John explain your duties in my household? To tutor your son and to assist with letters and the keeping of accounts. Good. We'll discuss it more fully on the journey. And now I must arrange the unloading of my new carriage. Oh, shall I accompany you, sir? No, you may as well look round the town before we leave. Get, say, here, with your luggage, in an hour, Mr. Harvey. And I'm very glad to welcome you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. All right, you need to be along. Come on, move along. Be off with you. I want a full inquiry, Captain. I want the culprits. That uh, may be difficult, sir. Nevertheless. You will pay a little less attention to your estate at Annandale and attend your duties. You may go. I'm deeply sorry. The church will be rebuilt. I beg forgiveness for my failure here. I have tried to bring her word to this forsaken place. But I can go no longer. I see you. Look with favor upon my request to depart this land, which has defeated me. Now come when you must gather around you the fabric of liberty. I beg your pardon, sir. You recently arrived, young man. Yesterday, sir. And undoubtedly you think me mad. I've no reason to, sir. Or have you reason to call me, sir? I'm a convict. Once, a senior fellow of Queen's College, Cambridge. Now, an exile of Botany Bay. 
Are you surprised? We're not all pickpockets and murderers. Thomas Palmer is my name. Mine is Mark Harvey. But, uh, why were you sent here? A pamphlet, Mr. Harvey, a pamphlet. I advocated reform. My indictment was pleased to describe it as seditious and inflammatory. Now is the time when you must gather around you the fabric of liberty. Or to your eternal infamy, let it fall to the ground, along with all that is valuable and dear to an enlightened people. Well, I must confess, I cannot see anything seditious in that. No? Nor I, Mr. Harvey. Yet, here I am. I have to leave, Mr. Palmer. I'm honoured to have made your acquaintance. Honoured? You're most kind. Very different from London, Mr. Harvey. Indeed, sir. Don't judge us by the town. Country air is far more agreeable. Was it the spirit of adventure or the prospect of opportunity that brought you halfway across the world? Oh, I think, um... A little of both, sir. Good. We need young men of your type here. And I am greatly relieved that Patrick will have a tutor. I look forward to making his acquaintance. You may find him somewhat solitary. His mother died when he was young, and I've not always had the time to devote to him. Is it far to Belchasna, sir? Another hour to Parramatta. We'll make a brief call on the MacArthur's and then real countryside, Mr. Harvey. Finest in the colony. Coming by daylight. My unit's away, you see. Till tomorrow. Not for him now. Go on. Won't hurt. Keep you warm, lad. Many a fine gentry's drunk that brew. Gentry? You'd be surprised. I mean, they'd rather buy from the sailor at five shillings than the officers at twenty, wouldn't they? So, you saw the governor. I called on him. And heard a catalogue of complaints, I dare say. What do you think of our colony, young man? First impression, sir. Sydney seems a, a lively town. <laughs> lively? Chaotic, more like. Governor Hunter's lost control here, Mannion. I'm merely a lander and a captain, not a politician. And I, sir, am merely a soldier. I say the man is not fit to rule. I've declared as much in letters to the Secretary of State. You think Hunter will go? Without question, and without commendation. But it takes time. Can I prevail on you to stay to dinner? Thank you, but I want to be home by dark. Pity. I'd hope to show you my new paddock down by the river. Bought an entire farm. Expensive? Ruinous. Cost me a barrel of rum. Which reminds me, there's talk of an illicit still, the sailor. Do you know that name? Not my part of the world. Well, if you should. On that sole issue, I agree with Hunter. Raw spirit, poisonous stuff, and dangerous if the convicts get hold of it. Well, pleasant journey, Mannion. Mm -hmm. Good day to you, Mr... Uh... Harvey, sir.
it. Or you won't taste it properly. You didn't see anything. You'll keep your mouth shut like always. Did you, Master Patrick? Sir, did Captain MacArthur mean, well, that he can get rid of Governor Hunter? MacArthur's a powerful man. I tend my farm, Mr. Harvey, and ask no questions. You'll find that's the best policy here. Take the reins. Do it. We could, I tell you. Shut up! What the hell, Dylan? <laughs> What's the joke, Doc? I don't know. We could do it. was to kill Mannion. Him overseers are chicken livered. We'd escape over the mountains. Your palm. We'll never get away from here. None of us. You stupid bastards! It's one man who keeps us slaves. Kill him. And we're free! Only one way to shut him up. We teach him a lesson. <laughs> My God, he's back. Keep him quiet. Keep your voices down there, you. all of you. <laughs> you make the noise, is it? Mr. Evans! Harriet, sir. Didn't expect you till morning. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Unload our baggage and then ask Miss Allen to prepare supper. Yes, sir. It's a fine new carriage you've got there. Sir. What the devil's that? Oh, he talks. Oh, you wish you were never born? Open it, Evans. Sir? Open it! I'll deal with this in the morning. You will go on half rations? There will be extra duties until I find out where it came from. Patrick, I think before we get to know the classics, we might get to know each other. Yes, sir.
Don't kill me. For God's sake, don't kill me. You heard nothing? No, Father. Mm. And you, Ellen? Nothing? No, sir. Shall I pour, sir? I'm disappointed, Patrick, at how little you seem to have observed. Not for me, Mr. Harvey. So, you've uh, read Boswell and Edmund Burke? Yes, sir. Do you know the wise man who said, as for me, all I know is that I know nothing? Uh, Socrates, sir. Very good. Where are you taking me? Johnny. Johnny Prentice. Move it. Nobody's talked. Yet. Money won't give up. Then it looks like us. Or the sailor. So you bought a demijohn and the convicts stole it. Is that what I'm expected to believe? So it happens, sir. Strange as it seems. Well, you're right about that, Mr. Merritt. It does seem strange. What's the name of this man? The sailor, sir. And can you tell me where I might find the sailor? We consider it our duty, sir. Beef. Real beef. Where'd you ever get it? Stall cow. And them clothes? And the tools to make this hut they stole? You're a... You bad You speak their language? I reckon I've heard of you. The red-headed kid that lives with the natives. Who's he? Name Bill alone. Bill. Brother. Terry. Tribe brother. But who's your real family? Your father and your mother? No father. Mother. Mama. They must think I'm a fool. However, it suits my purpose. I've been too soft. Not anymore. Certain things will have to change. Including, I must tell you, this... Uh, our relationship. It's irregular. Can't go on. Besides, there are other reasons. Reasons? 
During my visit to Ireland last year, I met a young lady who has done me the honor of promising to be my wife. I expect her arrival before the year is out. You'll not be needing me anymore, then. Well, that depends. On what? Your discretion, for one thing. You can rely on it. Your behavior, for another. If I am satisfied, you may remain as housekeeper. Thank you, sir. Day's work, Mannion. I'm grateful to you. My simple duty, Captain. There's a fellow who cannot meet his obligations. I'm obliged to foreclose on the land. I uh, thought you might care to bid for the livestock. Most assuredly. I shall attend to it. Good day, Mr. Uh... Harvey, sir. Oh. Good day, Mannion. Mr. Marriott! Sir. From now on, your position and Evans depend entirely on the increasing prosperity of my farm. I make myself clear. Yes, sir. Columbus with one M, Patrick. Like a lot of women, come on! Oh, oh! All the things! What do you think you're doing down there? Get up of your butt, you lazy! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up, you lazy! Get up, you lazy! Get up, you lazy! Get on, quick, Johnny. Come, come, come. I show you things, quick. Spanish coins. And then 
English. Where'd you get these? Oh, a long time. Uh, Tell fish, oysters, deal a bit. Look, look. See this. Cut, cut. Yes, Full of surprise, Johnny. What else you got in that box of treats? Cut here good, eh? Better than Bill. I've been a few things in my time. Ain't ever been a barber. Why are you convict? Because I caught a fish in a certain lordship's river. Ten years hard for a fish. You wouldn't understand that, Johnny. Hey! Bang! <laughs> and that's another thing. <laughs> No good having a musket without a ball and powder. Did you steal that? No, I take that from dead soldier. Did you kill him? No, the soldier die. No food, he die. One day I kill. A soldier don't be daft. Not soldier, I kill him. Who? Him, across river. He owns mama. That's who I'd kill one day. Get your backs into it. We never move the fat root that way. Come on, man, lean on it. Mr. Evans said he was slacking. Then Mr. Evans is within his rights. But, sir, don't you think there's... Think what, Mr. Harley? The overseers are driving the men too hard. You exceed your duties, Mr. Harley. Tutor my son and attend to the accounts. Those are matters for your concern. Ah, Patrick. Mr. Marsden sends his best wishes to you. Thank you, Father. And here's a letter for you from your future stepmother. Good news. Apparently, she's arriving sooner than expected. gentlemen. At last. Captain King. Governor King. A new order. I prefer to drink to the end of an old order. I'm rebuked. Censured for my conduct. And Lord Portland sends you, the governor-elect, to carry his dispatch. Sir, I wish only to pay my respects. I shall disembark my family, and Colonel Patterson has offered me his house until Your Excellency can find suitable transport to England. Transport, Mr. King? I never did care for your choice of words, even when you were my junior officer. I meant no offence. You'll learn, King. You'll find out what it's like to be isolated. Subjected to opposition and innuendo from your own commanders. And after five years, to be rebuked. Believe me, sir, I'm sorry. 
Even if I do believe you, what comfort does that give? I request Your Excellency's permission to withdraw. All these months, and still he says the vessel isn't suitable. Most unfortunate. Poor Captain Hunter. Poor well, Captain Hunter intends to sit here as long as he can, while I wait. Tells me I'll learn. I can't govern a prison colony and discipline these lads of the New South Wales. Pray Corps. don't excite yourself, King dear. Bring on your gout. That smells of failure and intrigue. He warns me. Am I a fool? No, haven't I eyes in my head? No, look. I do believe it's Miss Moore. The devil's Miss Moore. Everyone is talking of her. She's a gentlewoman. She's just arrived to wed Mr. Mannion. Gentlewoman. Excellent. Ask her in. Oh, they've gone past. And is this Captain MacArthur such a power? And will the new governor, Mr. King, be able to control him? My dear Connor. Oh, I know. I asked too many questions. <laughs> Mr. Mannion, who is that interesting looking man? Stephen, my dear. Call me Stephen. That man, Stephen. Who is he? A seditionist, my love. No fit acquaintance. Another unsuitable person. He looks so sad. You must realize, Connor, you've come to a strange society. We must choose carefully those with whom we associate. Well, this lady, then, she looks agreeable. Will you present me? Out of the question. But why, Mr... Why, Stephen? She's an emancipated convict. Housekeeper to one of the officers. Is there no one fit for me to meet? Oh, you have many companions. Mrs. MacArthur, Mrs. Abbott, and that uh, excellent soul, Mrs. Marsden. You'll be a person of some position, my love. You must be guided by me in these matters. Yes, Stephen. Just a touch of beef for that sort. Where's Bill these days? He's gone to his tarry, his tribe. His mother bought you up, huh? Mm -hmm. You're quite a lad, Johnny. Right, I mean, building his hut and trading at Green Hills and surviving out here like many a gold man couldn't. It's easy. No. It ain't easy being alone most of the time. Not alone now. Yeah. It's you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You and me. You and me. And we're free. There's no red coats. No chain gangs. And we'll always be free. <laughs> You've seen Miss Moore. Tell me, pray. Most handsome, Mrs. Abbott. And well-bred. Such an asset to the colony. A mature lady, Mrs. Blair? Indeed, no. Young, my dear. Quite astonishingly young. Look. Oh, it's a beautiful harbor. I don't think I've ever seen anything to match it. And where does this lead, Mr. Mannion? Uh, to the lookout at South Head, my love. But uh, can you not remember to call me Stephen? Oh, indeed, yes, I forgot. <laughs> oh, let's go there, Stephen. It would fatigue you, my dear. Not I, sir. I'm fond of walking. Unless, of course, you find it fatiguing. No, of course not. And you must tell me all about Patrick.
Johnny! Go away! Johnny, you remember me? Patrick! I remember! I knew you didn't drown. I looked for you lots of time. I know. I see you. Then why didn't you call me? This my river, you go away. This is not your river. My father owns this land. Johnny! Wait! We're friends! We're not friends, not anymore! But I saw him, Ellen. I talked to him. You don't believe me? It's not a matter of believing. I don't want it spoken of. It's a secret between you and me. I won't even tell Mark. You write it down in that book of yours. Not even in my diary. I promise. All right. Tell me what he looked like. Come! Come! Try it very good! <laughs> good powder! Shark some... That old fever had come back. Nothing to worry about. Well, Trasner, at long last. It looks very handsome, Stephen, dear. And I spared no expense, my love, to make it worthy of you. I can only hope that I'll be worthy of it. Ellen. Hello, my dear. This is our housekeeper. Ellen, this is Madeline. Ellen? Mum? Oh, and there's Patrick. I told you, didn't I? Who's the mistress now, eh? 